Hi, good morning. It's Sunday in Chicago and it's about to rain. So I think it's a perfect time to see if we can go around the world through the internet. How long does it take to go around the world on the internet? How long would it take for a packet? Okay, hard to manufacture. Sorry, with so many variables, it's impossible to figure out. How long does it take for a packet to travel halfway around the world? This is why I know I can make a video is because when you Google this, everyone's saying, oh, you can't. Of course, of course we can and we will. May not be in the fashion that they're imagining, but we are going to do it. How can I send a packet around closed as this is not a real question? <laughs> why? <laughs> as far as I'm aware, it's not possible. Okay, so we, we definitely have a video we can make this morning. This map shows how the internet travels across the world's oceans. What I'm going to attempt to do is basically go across the ocean to London, come through Europe to India, get over to Singapore, which is here, and then come across the ocean to San Francisco, and then cut through the United States back to New York. I may make a stop in Korea and say hi. We'll decide that later. When people say this can't be done, they're referring to a single packet that gets sent all the way around the world from one location to another. Yeah, you can't tell one packet to do that, but what you can do is have locations around the world that you travel to directly. And the question is, how long does it take to do all of that? You know, of course, what you can do is talk to a server here, which will quickly turn around and talk to a server here, which will quick, quickly turn around and talk to a server here. Okay, so let me, let me develop this on my local computer first. I want to tighten up this code and you'll see that it's actually not that much. We come in here, we make another request going to here, which makes another request going to here, which makes another request going to here. This is an endpoint, so it, re it replies. When this response comes in, it, re it replies to this response, which then replies to this response, which then creates some HTML and returns it. And so that's how you get this web page. And you see the first time you run it, it takes a quarter of a second to get through all the routes, but after that it learns and the time comes down. So I'm suggesting that we can take this code as a starting point, these are nodes that will hop from one node to the next, and this is an endpoint. If we if we start off a round of code in New York and go to London and then India and then Singapore and then San Francisco and then back to New York and hit an endpoint, those responses will collapse back to the original response and we'll get HTML showing us how long the whole thing took. But let's go get some servers around the world and um, let's make a round trip. So I say let's go London, Bangalore, Singapore, San Francisco, and New York. So we already have New York. So I need to get four different servers. Okay, I think we're wired up here. And several things going on simultaneously. This is... Chicago, which is talking to New York, which kicks things off by going to London, Bangalore, Singapore, San Francisco, and then back to New York. So if it takes a thousand, if it takes a second to go around the world, it's going to take two seconds before we even see the, the timestamps. So let's try this one more time. Will the DNS servers start to remember where they're sending and will these times come down? Let's check it out. So actually this is very consistent. It is consistently taking three quarters of a second to go around the world. I'm going to do some math on what all that means. We had some estimates that it would be about 550 milliseconds, but keep in mind we're actually stopping at these server locations, which takes time. We're doing some computer processing at each location, so that's going to cause some delays. But I want to throw a wrench into the works here. If we go to Helmador.com, we have a web page being served out of New York, and when we click this button, we're actually going to send a signal to a Raspberry Pi in Korea, which will then talk by radio to a box inside of a humidor, get a response, and send it back. So that's going there and back in 0.33 seconds. The reason is, is we're using web sockets. So instead of having to resolve the actual route each time, the web socket connection establishes the route. Look, 264. So we got 264. This, this web socket keeps the route open and cuts down the time it takes to travel. 
So I put together some rough numbers. I'm not actually counting the distance of the fiber optics going through the oceans. I'm just going as the bird flies. These are underestimating the actual speeds traveled. But basically, if you go from New York to Seoul, that's 6,800 miles. So if you do it twice in 260 milliseconds, that's going to be 51,000 or 52,000 miles per second. If you look at the routes we went with the regular get requests or post requests, the HTTP requests, we want an average of about 28,000 miles per hour. What we can see is that, yeah, so WebSockets appear to be going about twice as fast. I think the thing to do now is convert my routes to a so socket connections. If we send sockets around the world, how much faster will it go? This may go fairly quickly. And you see that it says made a client connection ED8 and this has got a socket connection EDA. So London attached to New York. When I hit vinsec.com, it goes to port 555. And you see London says I got a packet. So there you go. New York says what time we started. And now London has adds its own timestamp. So we can just keep this going all the way around back to New York. And that will set up our socket connection around the world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this software to GitHub and pull it down to the other servers. So bear in mind, we're not using HTTP requests right now. So remember when you use HTTP requests, there's a request and there's a response. That's not happening here. This is a one-way communication. We just send the socket one time. So by the time we get around to New York, we'll be done. You see that we can hit that web page and we're given the word hello. And do we have a socket? No, it's undefined. But as we start to tie this up, these two connect. DCP, DCP. And got to London in 37 milliseconds. Let's fire up Bangalore. They connected, as you saw. We're going to run it again. Got to Bangalore in 114 milliseconds. Let's go to Singapore. Only a thousand miles, right? Took 10 milliseconds, 123, 123 milliseconds. Now we fire up San Francisco. This is the long one. This is what, 8,000 miles, I believe? Ah, uh, and New York made a client connection with San Francisco. So you see we're all tied together now. New York, London, Bangalore, Singapore, San Francisco, back to New York, they're all tied up. And when we hit this, <laughs> we got around in not a number of milliseconds. It's because I forgot an E. So, <laughs> VCC, VCC, ready to go around the world in 267 milliseconds. That is not bad. I'm gonna take these numbers to, the, to my math. The circumference of the Earth is 24,000 miles. We're actually going 21.7. So this isn't the same as going all the way around the equator, but we are going around the world. I'll take it. Look, we can, we can, we can pick another droplet somewhere else and make this distance longer, but it's fine. Let's calculate now. going around the world in 260 milliseconds basically and look at look at the consistency you see it's not exactly the same each time there's a 37 instead of a 36 we're actually hitting these routes so we're going to we're going New York London India Singapore back to the US and across the country and we're doing all of that in 263 milliseconds there you have it around the world in just over a quarter of a second hope you enjoyed it please subscribe to Ohio IoT